strongly condemns the brutal murder of a 32-year-old Cameroonian woman in Moyoka in the FACO division. We, he also says this act of barbarism is strongly condemned by the Republic. We shall bring to you an official statement from the Minister of Communication, Emmanuel René Sadi, on this barbaric act which has sent shockwaves down the spine of many Cameroonians. More and more attacks continue to be meted on the population in the southwest region as the manager of CDC's residence was attacked early this morning and his bodyguard kidnapped. In sport, activities are set for a new sports season to begin on the 26th of September 2020 as the country will also be fine-tuning tactics to prepare for AFCON 2021. Sportsman John Paul Sama with details and much more in this newscast. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining the 6 p.m. newscast on Spectrum Television. I am Josephine Binzi. As announced in the headlines, the government of the Republic has taken cognizance in astonishment and indignation of the upsurge of acts of barbarity and horror perpetrated in recent days by secessionist terrorists and groups which continue to sow terror amongst the population in the northwest and in the southwest region. Two murders in Bingwe Road in Mankong and Makanga neighborhood in Moyoka Fako divisions, respectively. Miss Mba Treasure and Miss Comfort 32, who were brutally beheaded due to accusations meted on them. The government strongly condemns these heinous and unsustainable acts committed by secessionist gangs who, for absurd reasons, continue to kill the population. The government also denounces accusations of these barbaric actions to be linked to defense and security forces in the crisis hit zones. The government conveys to the bereaved families their sincere apologies of the head of state His Excellency President Paul Bia. The government however reaffirms the firm determination to pursue the complete reconstruction process in Noso to work tirelessly for peace to return in the two English-speaking regions, signed Samuel Emmanuel René Sadi. The Cameroonian military, through its communication head, debunks rumors on social media that the presumed killers of the lady portrayed in the video have been captured. Our reporter John Paul Sama looks at what transpired before her demise. A short video in her possession throws light on the gruesome killing of a lady by a group of armed men with her hands tied back in a scene set to be in Moyuka, southwest region of Cameroon. The woman in question was tapped to be a black leg as she was accused of having paid several visits to the camp of the military personnel stationed there. During her interrogation before the murder was carried out, she tried explaining that her visit there was not courtesy and she expressly made it clear that her brother was arrested, reasons why she didn't like going there. Despite her explanations, the group of men had already made it clear from the onset that she would be decapitated. A decapitation which took place in a ruthless fashion with her body tracked to the road for a crime they termed black leg. This latest scene just adds to the many lives which have been lost as a result of the crisis in the northwest and southwest regions with some still fresh in the minds of most. And we still remain in the southwest region where a series of unrest and attacks have been characterized, have characterized the northwest and southwest regions of the country. Some unidentified men have last night stormed the house of the Cameroon Development Corporation CDC project manager's house in Pendamboko. His bodyguard is said to have been kidnapped and his son sitting for the ordinary level examinations is believed to have been shot while his house was set ablaze. All private and CDC property has been reduced to ashes in these recent attacks.
We move over to Konye subdivision where revitalizing youths of the Konye municipality through a community industrialization foundation institute of vocational training has been the main objective of the mayor of Konye municipal council on the 11th of August 2020. Konye is one of the areas that has been badly affected by the ongoing socio-political crisis that have stormed the southwest region. Crystal Asexuele has details in this newscast. Revitalizing the youth of the once vibrant Konya municipality, one of the places in the southwest region greatly hit by the ongoing socio-political crisis in the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon, is the main goal of the mayor's initiative of creating a community industrialization foundation institute of vocational training in Konya. What motivated me first of all is my volition. I work with the community. I'm a community worker. And I've seen the plight of the common man. I've seen what the, the, the damages this crisis has brought into our communities. The youth have to be empowered. The underprivileged have to be empowered. The rural masses are supposed to be empowered. That is why we thought that we should come up with this initiative so that as a philanthropic career-oriented welfare foundation, we could put our own quota in the development of our community. Launched Tuesday, August 11, 2020 in Kumba, the presence of the chiefs and elites of Konya municipality and beyond, the stakeholders took time to brainstorm on ways and means to make this laudable initiative work out successfully. The question about the newly introduced project that has been introduced by uh, Barista, uh, Mosima George uh, Lobe. It's a wonderful project. It's a wonderful project. I am uh, in a wonderful support of the project because uh, Konya, not only Konya, but my division in general hasn't got such opportunities. And, but, but for now, we just thank God that God has given such an opportunity that some of the youths may engage in getting trained. Because the youth, more of the problem of the youth is as a result of their idol. The truth is that the youths are idle, they, have, they haven't got things to do. They are not trained, they do not have trades that they could do. So the idleness has led them more to, to be where they are. So I just pray for God's the support, the support from the Almighty God, that He will guide us and guide them to see that they will get engaged into the streets and that will boom the division. Since one of the municipalities greatly hit by the ongoing socio-political crisis in these regions, majority of the youths have dropped out of school, wandering in the community doing nothing. It is the hope of the initiator of this project that the once dynamic Konya municipality be re-energized. And we still talk crime waves right now. We move to the littoral region where Jumum Dodai Amadu, Buba, Mohammed, and Sadu alias Bello are suspects of a gang who have been perpetrators of high level crimes for the past few months. The operation began in Marwa in the month of in the month of July and they furthered the activities in the Adamawa region. Their latest victim, Zoye Matemu Pascal was gone down in his residence. They pushed security officials in the Adamawa and littoral region to further investigations at Katie Yambom Japoma Duala. The hunt successfully claimed a bag of ammunition where four chargers and 618 munitions of caliber 5.56 times 45 millimeters and other dangerous weapons were seized. The Legion commander Pierre Aimé Bikele reassures the population that they will do all in their power to keep re residents in the littoral region safe. It is exactly a week since authorities in the littoral region, headed by the governor of the littoral region, uh, Samuel Diodene Vahadivoa, have carried out a demolition exercise at Total Konbong in the Douala 3 municipality. Victims of demolition are, however, still trying to gather the broken pieces of their lives, as Oni Ladonet tells us in the following report. 
Inhabitants of the total Kolbong neighborhood in the Duala 3 municipality are yet to recover from the shock caused by the demolition of their properties on Thursday, the siege of August, by the Duala City Council. Uh, well, we were surprised by the sudden operation initiated by the governor of the region without any consultation. As far as we're concerned, these are perpetrated would only be identified with political and mafia-oriented groups with the intention of saving their land and pushing weak peoples against the regime in place. It should be precise that this land was legally obtained. Regardless of the abrupt demolition, no compensation has been given or promised. Uh, uh, we, we, we didn't meet with uh, the authorities in place. We have never met, so the, there is no consultation, no relation with them. The victims are calling on the government to take proper measures in solving this problem because these lands are rightfully owned by them. I search we are asked for joint inquiry between the civil society, the parliament and the administration. The exercise has been carried out by the governor of Littoral, Samuel Diedone Ivaha Dibua, alongside the Douala City Council with aim to expand the road. And now we take you to the Dwala 2 municipality and we open our cholera series. The New Bell locality in the Dwala 2 municipalities is one of the most affected neighborhoods in the littoral region with the cholera waterborne disease. Inhabitants are very much aware of this disease and are working towards fighting its spread in their communities. We remain with you on Iladonet. With the New Bell locality in the Douala 2 municipality being one of the epicenters of the cholera epidemic, inhabitants of this neighborhood have adopted different hygienic rules so as to help fight against this disease. In order to fight against cholera, before eating, we wash our hands. Even the drainage systems are being cleaned here at New Bell. Since these drainages have been cleaned, we are fine. I have a filter at home placed on the wall. And the children are aware that they are to wash their hands after eating. They shouldn't touch the floor carelessly. On ne doit pas toucher le sol n'importe comment avec une maladie qui a dû. Bon, moi par exemple. I, for example, I don't eat along the road. I don't drink sachets of water or bottle of water that has been sold at 50 francs. I am really fragile, so if I'm to drink water, I drink mineral water. Apart from that, at home, I boil my water before drinking. When I buy fruit sold in the market, I make sure to wash them thoroughly before eating. In the fight against cholera, one has to be very clean. Clean their environment, clean the house, always be clean and always wash your hands. Others still prefer the vaccine as it is being prescribed by government. I feel free taking vaccines because it protects people. It is a government that provided it, so that's why we accepted to get vaccinated, so we can be safe from all this disease. However, some still doubt the efficiency of these vaccines. For me, instead of taking these vaccines, it's a no. These vaccines don't bring anything to us. I feel they add more of diseases in our system. Instead, I take garlic, ginger and lemon and I give some to my children. According to the World Health Organization, these cholera vaccines are very effective in preventing the cholera disease. 
two metropolitan archbishops of the Douala and Yaoundé diocese respectively have for some time now shared divergent opinions on the ongoing health crisis. His Lordship Samuel Kleda thinks the reduced number of patients seeking his drugs is an indication that the COVID-19 pandemic is over, while his comrade Jacques Mbaga is completely on the opposite end of the coin. Christelle Asexuele looks deep into this controversies and has this in the following report. Division in the Catholic clergy, His Lordship Savon Cleda and His Lordship Jean Baga bring it back and this time is the fight against the common enemy, the novel coronavirus disease that tears apart the two metropolitan archbishops. Wales the first Phytotherapeutics has been very active in the fight against this deadly virus by putting at the disposal of patients a herbal pharmacopoeia, traditional treatment, believes that the disease is no longer a threat to the Cameroonian population based on the reduced number of patients he receives these days compared to the high number he received during the outbreak of the pandemic. He decides to uplift the restrictions placed on religious services since March 2020. A few days later, a response to these claims are made not from the medical staff, but from the Metropolitan Archbishop of Yaoundé. In his sermon on Sunday, August 9, His Lordship Jean Bargar insisted on the fact that this coronavirus is not over yet. This is not the only instance where these two clergies don't agree. There's been another more sensitive subject where both clergies have disagreed on the same subject. That of the disappearance of his lordship Benoit Bella, suicide or murder, the question has been hanging on the clergy's mind. For the Archbishop of Douala, it was an assassination, not suicide, as he opposed to the point of view of the Archbishop of Yaoundé. To him, the funeral service of the late bishop were to be withheld until light was brought to this issue. Their most greatest disagreement was in 2018 after the just ended presidential elections on October 23rd. His Lordship Samuel Clader questioned the results of the CPDM presidential candidate in the North, Northwest and Southwest regions where their campaigns were hindered due to security reasons. Three days after, it was during the 1 p.m. newscast on CRTV that his comrade in Yaoundé congratulated the President of the Republic for the good conduct of the elections. Always on divergent positions, whereas some accuse his Lordship Samuel Kleda to be in party with the opposition, others criticize his Lordship Bishop Jean Berga for being close to the ruling party. And on our international page, face masks have made life much more difficult for one part, especially with people living with disabilities. They rely on lip reading and watching facial expressions to communicate with people who don't understand the sign language. But there is a solution following this VOA report. Brenda Schertz leads the American Sign Language program at Cornell University. When the pandemic arrived, she hadn't anticipated that face masks would cause her so many problems. Deaf and mute from birth, Schertz realized everyday conversations with people wearing masks were almost impossible. Like Schertz, over 48 million Americans suffer from full or partial hearing loss and face the same problem. Communication uh, can be done without speech in many ways by using facial expressions, by using gesturing. And the mask suddenly uh, blocks off that one route of communicating with people who do not use American Sign Language. This makes a simple trip to a pharmacy or grocery store more difficult for people with hearing impairments. The pharmacist's faces are all covered by masks. Those individuals who are working in, this, in stores, what I would say to them in terms of removing barriers is if somebody is not responding to your verbal comments, be creative, be compassionate, be patient. Think about why that person might, be not, might not be responding. Anne McIntosh, full professor at the University of Maryland Global Campus that is suffering from congenital deafness, has developed a special mask with a transparent plastic window, allowing a person's mouth to be seen. 
This is the first such mask that has been officially approved by FDA. The idea to make such a mask came to Macintosh many years ago, after she had to have an emergency C-section. Both the nurse, the attending doctor, the anesthesiologist, and even my husband were all gobbed up in surgical scrub from head to toe, including a mask. And I was not able to lip read or follow along what was being said. The little transparent window in the mask allows for lip reading and picking up on the person's facial expressions and emotions. Above all, these masks are needed in hospitals. Even before the pandemic, people with hearing impairments faced the problem of understanding doctors. But the current situation made things worse. You could have an, uh, an infant, a newborn there for several days, weeks or even months. They've never seen a human smile because everybody had been masked up. So that really does affect their ability to bond with others, whether it's a caregiver According to the data provided by the World Health Organization, about 5% of the world's population, some 466 million people, have various forms of hearing impairments and could benefit greatly from masks that allow to see people's faces. Maxim Moskalko for VOA News, Washington. And in sports, we go to one of our top stories. A sports pundit in Cameroon say the proposed kickoff date for the local championship by the Federation of September 26 is a much welcomed one as it would provide ample time for the country to prepare for the upcoming African, African Nations Championship. John Paul Summer, sportsman, has details. Given that all goals as planned, Lovers of football in the country will once more enjoy this great game as the country's FA is set to fix the date of restart on September 26, much to the delight of football actors. Assume football in the country uh, is a welcome projection, for now I call it a projection, uh, because concrete actions need to be taken for, it to get in, for us to get into uh, making it an action. Uh, yes, the Federation is working very hard, as illustrated by the presence of the boss of the Federation in yesterday's meeting with the Minister. Uh, they are thinking about September 26. I think it's, it's, it's welcome too. Uh, I, in my humble opinion, I think we've even over the lead because of the responsibilities we have and what others have done. During the meeting this Wednesday, the Minister of Sports and Physical Education gave the green light for safe resumption as Cameroon prepares to host the upcoming African Nations Championship with the local league to serve as a byproduct for players. I mean, hosting the CHAN uh, is a competition that its players are only picked from the national championships. So uh, the longer you stay without the national championship, the lesser the chance of success for the CHAN team. And you talk about other nations, you realize that other nations that are even in greater difficulties, like Egypt, uh, for example, have resumed their championship and are having some crisis in the course of the uh, continuation of, uh, of COVID-19 football, but they are carrying on with it. So I think it's welcomed. We can't wait. The actors have been out of work for five months. It's the only sector that has been crippled, you know, uh, the football sector or the sports sector in general, uh, because nearly all, every other sector is, uh, is, 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 is back to full life, except in the case of sports. Football and other sporting activities were stopped abruptly in March as a result of the coronavirus, with its return now eminent in Cameroon in the weeks ahead. Thanks for watching the 6 p.m. news. That is a report that concludes it for tonight's edition of the news. Remain with Rene Nassis Moto with more information in the French language. We will be back tomorrow. Good night.